I drink a lot of coffee and wine. I feel like those are important things in my life. Like I need them. I feel like coffee and wine are like my life coaches. <laughs> Coffee's there for a pat on the ass, like, go get them, we can do this. And then wine's like, you'll get them tomorrow. <laughs> you gave it a good shot. <laughs> Keep your chin up. I'm like, thanks, wine. <laughs> You're the only one who gets me. <laughs> I like classical radio stations. They're so peaceful, you know? The DJs are so soft-spoken. They'll take like these really long pauses after the song ends. Almost like they're afraid to speak. It's like bum, 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 bum. <sighs> that was Beethoven's Sonata. In G flat major. Why gotta be so creepy about it? <laughs> Just play the next song. You make me feel so dirty. <laughs> they always tell you the key signature, too. It's always part of the title, like, oh. <sighs> <laughs> that was Rachmaninoff's Moonlight Sonata. In E flat minor. <laughs> it's like we're not trying to play along at home. Ah, E flat minor. I was so close. Mm, an excellent choice, Ludwig. <laughs> I don't like when people tell me that their baby is flirting with me. Like a baby will smile at me, and the parents are like, oh, she's such a flirt. I don't know how to tell you this, but I'm not attracted to your baby. <laughs> I feel like it's inappropriate of them to even suggest that. Because what if I was to be like, you know, I'm so glad you said that because I thought your baby was flirting with me. And I was like, am I crazy? Is this baby into me? So thank you for the green light with your baby. It is on baby style. I think what they're actually saying is, I hope my baby is heterosexual. Because if a boy baby was smiling at me, they would be like, well, looks like we got a gay baby. You sure he's not just smiling? No, he's gay. Fair enough. It is fun to do the gay voice, though. You know, like, seriously, whatever. I should say stereotypically flamboyant gay voice. Not all gay people talk like that, unfortunately. But there is something fun about it, liberating even. Because for straight guys, we have a very limited range of emotion that we're allowed to show. We always have to keep things so bland and boring, like, all right, I'll see you at six and bring the files, I'll see you there. <laughs> Gay guys are like, you better be there. It's like so fun. I'm so jealous. Gay people have their own flag, of course, the rainbow flag. Nobody ever burns that flag, though. That wouldn't be much of a protest to see a flaming gay flag. It's more of a show of support, really. Sometimes people will profess to be supportive of gay rights or gay marriage, but they do it in a way that doesn't really sound supportive. They'll be like, yeah, who cares? Just marry whoever you want. I don't need to know, who cares? That's not really supportive. Have you ever gone to a wedding and given the bride and groom a card that says, who cares? <laughs> They're human beings. It's an important day. Maybe you should care. Maybe caring is more supportive. I don't even like the term sexual preference. I don't think it's accurate language. I don't think it's a preference. Like, I prefer direct flights. <laughs> but if there's a layover, I'll still take the flight. If I book a flight to Vagina and there's a layover in man's ass, I'm canceling the trip. Good night, everybody. Thank you so much.